pray that revelation knowledge will flow freely this morning build your people by your word let your word come with clarity of thoughts and our hearts be open to understand nobody lives here the same way they came we give you praise and glory for the victory that we have in Christ Jesus already. In Jesus' precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands. Let's release our faith together as we say these words. I am born of God. I am born of the word. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand. The word of his grace, I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. We want to welcome every one of you joining us by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all the platforms, and all our campuses connecting this morning. You guys get ready. We're excited to bring the word to you today. Let's celebrate our viewers again for being a part of this great service this morning hallelujah anybody here excited about the gift of life in christ can we celebrate the life of god with a shout let's just celebrate what we have in jesus glory hallelujah amen you can be seated with your sweet smart self this morning let's get in the word of god hallelujah understanding the law and the prophets we've been on that and we're still on that because we're trying to equip you to be able to interpret the scriptures properly and gain all that you need to gain out of the word of god the book of luke chapter 24 verse 25 then he said unto them "O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken and we said when you see the word all it has to be all these things all these things all these things that the prophets have spoken so there are specific things that the prophets spoke that we are supposed to believe slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken isaiah 53 isaiah will say who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the lord revealed is the same thing jesus was saying that they were slow of heart to believe what the prophets have spoken when you read the scriptures you will find the law and you will find the gospel you will find the righteousness of the law you will find the righteousness of faith in christ in the same place you know you will find um human efforts and you will find the finished work of christ in the same places hence the need to rightly divide the word of truth the law was not healthy and the law is still not healthy is the word asthenio in the greek a word used for sickness and it says what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh the law was weak the law was sick diet through the flesh the law was not healthy so god gave grace the grace of god was sent by god which is jesus christ to free us from the punishment of the law or from the punishment of the deeds of the law god didn't give grace because of adam's sin because god has always been grace it's not a response it is god's proaction ahead of time that's why romans chapter 8 verse 15 look at it says for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry abba father bondage to slavery the law is bondage the, the law is slavery the law enslaves that's why everybody under the law is a servant you will never find anybody under the law that has come to a place of freedom galatians chapter 4 verse 24 adds something to it which things are an allegory for these are the two covenants the one from the mount sinai which generated to bondage which is aga the law from mount sinai is bondage what do you get from bondage you get from bondage the law what is the law is the law of sin and death that is it is the law of sin which is death the law of sin which is death and in that law you find condemnation and in that law you find accusation look at the way the writer of hebrews will put it in hebrews chapter 2 verse 15 and delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage bondage to the law 
all their lifetime they were subject to bondage fear of death is a greek word dohio d-u-o-h-e-a bondage of the fear of death bondage of the fear of death and there is a spirit of the devil in bondage there is a spirit of the devil that is attributed to that ministry there is a spirit to the law in the new testament we have the spirit of liberty and then in the old testament we have the spirit of bondage so anyone who ministers the law ministers the spirit of bondage so there is a spirit to the law the bondage of the law is spiritual and is active the bondage of the law is spiritual and is active that bondage is active and it's in the nature of a man that is not born again that is why the law drives down to people's consciousness you know it affects how they think it affects how they believe so it's very important the spirit of bondage is in the law so what is the holy spirit called the holy spirit is called the spirit of liberty the spirit of liberty stand fast in the liberty wherewith christ has set you free for the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty the spirit of liberty that's what we have in christ jesus jesus said when he the spirit of truth is come he will convict the world of sin he will not accuse the world the holy ghost is not an accuser he will convict the world of sin because the spirit of truth is the spirit of faith the spirit of truth is the spirit of faith and the holy spirit convinces the sinner of jesus christ he doesn't convince the sinner that he is a sinner the spirit of truth will convince the world of jesus our righteousness jesus our justifier jesus our intercessor jesus the gift of god to us that's what the holy spirit will convince the world of so there is a spirit in the law of moses look at luke chapter 9 verse 54 and when his disciples james and john saw these they said lord will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as elijah did next verse but he turned and rebuked them and said you know not what manner of spirit you are of there is a spirit of bondage in the law when the law is preached the spirit of bondage is ministered or is served is served anywhere you find destruction of lives because of sin that is not the spirit of god anywhere you find a destruction of lives because of sin that is not the spirit of god the spirit of god does not destroy the spirit of god saves so to say god destroyed sodom and gomorrah is not right because the son of man is not come to destroy and if he's not come to destroy it will mean that he has never destroyed and if he has never destroyed it will mean that he will never destroy because what he has not done before he will not do now he will not do after he is consistent in his character and he is consistent in his disposition towards man he is the same yesterday he is the same today he will be the same forever he says i am the lord i change it not so if the son of man did not come to destroy then it will not be god that destroyed sodom and gomorrah please stay with me this is very important because i want to get into some very intelligent reasoning with you so the question will be was sodom destroyed by god was sodom destroyed by god that's the first question second question was sodom and gomorrah destroyed because of homosexuality was sodom and gomorrah destroyed because of homosexuality well let's study now the book of romans chapter 5 verse 13 for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law hmm. sin is not imputed when there is no law so sin was in the world but there was no imputation sin was in the world meaning there was nothing called the sin of homosexuality in genesis there was nothing like that that sin was not 
recorded because sin was in the world but it was not imputed so there will be nothing like the sin of homosexuality the way you're looking at me you're not hearing me sin was in the world but sin is not imputed where there is no law if there is no law against stealing and you steal you didn't steal because there is no law against it it is the law that defines sin and it is the law that measures judgment so sin was in the world but sin was not imputed because there is no law if there is no definition then you can't call it the sin of homosexuality because there will be no law with which to measure it and punish it if there is no traffic light and the car comes and passes it has not committed an offense the offense of a car will be measured the moment a traffic light is applied and the lights are red and the car passes that is when the man has committed a traffic offense and should be punished for it but if there is no traffic light there is no traffic offense so where there is no law there is no sin even though sin is there but there is no law to define and measure it and there is no law to punish it so since there was no law in genesis the sin of homosexuality is not recorded and it's not on record the only sin you will find in the book of genesis is a sin of unbelief now i'm not saying that homosexuality is not a sin but we need to look at it very intelligently very intelligently because we already live in a society where these realities are with us and we must know how to present the gospel to them we must know how to respond to them we must know how to even relate to them there may even be some of them in this service right now as you're looking at me so don't look at me like that like ah how can you preach homosexuality on the pulpit hey right there in the bible and the scriptures are given to you for doctrine all right so let's go intelligently genesis 19 what exactly was the problem of sodom was there homosexuality in sodom yes there was lord had two angelic visitors genesis 19 5 and they called unto lord and said unto him where are the men which came into thee this night bring them out unto us that we may know them this is not a sermon on homosexuality but it's important to address it for understanding bring them out that we may know them is the word yada y-a-d-a-h is used over 900 times in the hebrew text and just about 12 percent or so is used for sex for example genesis 4 1 and adam knew eve his wife and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Knew his wife. In that same Genesis 19 verse 8, let's see what Lot answered the men. Behold now, I have two daughters which have not known men. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you. And do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. So it is obvious from Lord's response that what the men of Sodom wanted to do with these two angelic male visitors was to have sex with them. That is what the men of Sodom wanted to do. Alright? Now let's look at the epistles. Jude verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh as set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire so jude 7 lets us know that the problem with sodom and this man was sexual they wanted to have sex with them but the word used here is not just general sexual immorality 
he called it strange flesh strange flesh is a greek word etharos used for something that is unlawful so what these guys wanted to do with those angelic visitors was homosexuality and homosexuality falls under the category of sexual immorality sexual immorality ex perennial etaros used for illegal sex illegal sex they went after strange sex with strangers strange sex with strangers he doesn't define what manner of sexual immorality is but they wanted to have strange illegal sex and they wanted to have it with the strangers ezekiel under the old testament or under the law surprisingly said something about this you know he says a stranger came to them instead of being hospitable they wanted to have forced sex with the strangers he does not stress homosexuality even in jude he didn't emphasize sex jude seems to deal with the culture the culture of that territory look at ezekiel 16 49 behold this was the iniquity of thy sister sodom pride fullness of bread abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy that's the way ezekiel puts it look at verse 50 and they were haughty and committed abomination before me therefore i took them away as i saw so ezekiel's emphasis here on sodom was hospitality instead of being hospitable to the strangers they were looking for how to molest the strangers let's see brother peter's commentary on this issue second peter chapter 2 verse 6 to 8 and turning the cities of sodom and gomorrah into ashes condemned them with an overthrow making them an example unto those that after should live godly and deliver just lord vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds look at how jesus taught about sodom we're looking at you know all through scriptures look at jesus's commentary on sodom and gomorrah matthew 10 14 and whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when you depart out of the house or city shake off the dust of your feet next verse verily i say unto you it shall be more tolerable for the land of sodom and gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city jesus did not mention homosexuality when he spoke of sodom because homosexuality is not a specialized scene in the bible it's not in a class sin is sin homosexuality is not in a class homosexuality is in the same class with lies stealing fighting malice anger unforgiveness they are all members of the same family that's why you see the way jesus put it look at verse 14 and 15 again the way jesus put it and whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when you depart out of that house or city shake off the dust of your feet verily i say unto you it shall be more tolerable for the land of sodom and gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city he didn't classify the scene he just dealt with them like he would deal with any other city it's obvious that they rejected salvation because jesus said any city you enter where they reject the gospel shake the dust off your feet their judgment will be worse than sodom and gomorrah so the problem of sodom and gomorrah was a rejection of salvation and deliverance it means that the servants of god were not received in sodom so the destruction of sodom was the absence of god's power when you reject servants of god you reject the power of god because the servants of god are the carriers of god's power 
when the servants of god come to you with the power of the gospel and you reject them you reject the power of god when you reject the power of god the absence of god's power will be judgment or destruction the absence of the servants of god who we are bringing the power of god to you through the gospel will be destruction it will be destruction that's what happened to sodom it was not a visitation as a result of what they did sodom was not destroyed because they did something sodom was destroyed because they rejected the servants of god hence they rejected the power of god that will have saved them from destruction the presence and the power of god is what delivers a man from destruction genesis 18 verse 17 and the lord said shall i hide from abraham that thing which i do next verse seeing that abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him blessed where so what does it mean to be blessed in abraham justification by faith so when he says that they shall be blessed in him what does he mean the same way abraham was justified by faith is the same way all those in abraham will be justified by faith justification devoid of works justification devoid of works. so he was saying that all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in abraham or all nations of the earth will experience the forgiveness of sin i will tell abraham seeing the nations will receive the forgiveness of sins meaning to be declared righteous by faith in genesis 12 abraham i will bless those that bless you cause those that cause you in you shall all nations of the earth be blessed all nations of the earth will be justified by faith that the blessing of abraham galatians 3 13 might come on the gentiles that we might receive the promised spirit what is the promised spirit the spirit of adoption which guarantees forgiveness of sins so abraham himself was an ungodly man he was not a good guy he was an ungodly man who also believed and his faith was counted for righteousness abraham wasn't better than the people in sodom the difference was that abraham believed so which means once a man believes the gospel his faith in the gospel gives him the forgiveness of sins and gives him the life of god now in the new covenant acts 3 25 to 26 you are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which god made with our fathers saying unto abraham and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed next verse unto you first god having raised up his son jesus sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities that's the blessing the blessing is the forgiveness of sin or turning men away from their iniquities galatians 3 8 and the scripture foreseeing that god will justify the hidden through faith preached before the gospel unto abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed that is the same way you've been forgiven is the same way all nations will be forgiven by faith devoid of works by faith devoid of works so through abraham the gospel will reach the nations look at it again in genesis 18 20 and the lord said because the cry of sodom and gomorrah is great and because their sin is very grievous the cry that word cry is the word sequa in the hebrew translation is a word for distress sequa the cry the distress and the lord said because the distress of sodom and gomorrah is great and because they are sin sin not sins and because they are sin singular s-i-n which is error in the hebrew is the word chatter c-h-a-t-t-a-h 
used 212 times. Their sin, their error. So question now is, what was the sin, S-I-N, not sins, of Sodom? There has to be sin, S-I-N, before sins are imputed. So what could have been happening in Sodom was they rejected the world. Sodom and Gomorrah rejected the word of God. Same Genesis 18, 21 to 22. I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which is common to me. And if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Abraham stood yet before the Lord. That means someone was accusing the city. Someone was accusing the city. Sequa, which actually means a cry for help. A cry for help. You will see that same word used in Genesis 37, 34. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days he mourned it's a cry for help so sodom needed help sequa they needed help in fact in that verse 22 of genesis 18 and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards sodom but abraham stood yet before the lord what did Abraham do when he stood? He saw the man going towards Sodom. And Abraham stood before the Lord. What was he doing when he stood yet before the Lord? He stood to pray, to intercede for Sodom. Because he has already seen what was coming to Sodom. So he stood in prayer. And he said, if you find 50 righteous men, if you find 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, he stopped at 10. And God kept saying, I will save the city if I find 10. I will spare them of destruction if I find 10. Abraham should have come to five. Abraham should have come to one. If God will spare for ten, he will spare for one. But Abraham stopped praying at ten. And once we stop praying, we hinder sinners salvation. Once we stop praying, that's why I say pray the Lord of the harvest. Pray for them that their minds that are blinded may be. The salvation of men ultimately is in the hands of men. A man must pray. A man must preach. If a man does not preach, they will not hear. That's why Jesus said, whoever sins you forgive, it shall be forgiven. How do we forgive sins? By preaching the gospel. When we preach, we're bringing forgiveness to men. That's why the gospel is the message of the forgiveness of sins. When we don't preach, we are not forgiving men. We are holding their sins against them. Abraham stood here to pray. Look at verse 23. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? He has started his prayer. So, when he says, if you find the righteous, will you still destroy the city? The question here is, who is the righteous in Genesis? Who is, because he says, if you find the righteous, will you destroy the righteous in the wicked? So, the golden question is, who is the righteous in this context? Who is the righteous? the man who believed god the man who believed god because abraham himself was righteous how by faith not moral standing righteous by faith not 
moral standing. And it appears like he sent angels to do the job. The wiping away of Sodom and Gomorrah, it appears angels did that job. So men in the Old Testament acted under the law of sin and death. But let me ask you another question, church. Did the angels also act under the law of sin and death? Huh? Yes? Okay. Let's look at it doctrinally. Let's look at it doctrinally. First Peter 1.10 of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you next verse searching what or what manner of time the spirit of christ which was in them this signified when he testified beforehand the sufferings of christ and the glory that shall follow next verse unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you which the holy ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into angels desire they don't know salvation ephesians 3 10 to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of god the church will teach angels the church will teach angels hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 are they not all ministering spirits sent for to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation so where angels cooperating with death were they cooperating with death or could they have cooperated with death huh huh you said yes all right were angels involved in destruction huh you said yes Okay, so let's find out. Why was Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed? Homosexuality or unbelief? All right, very good. Unbelief. Look at Luke 17, 28. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. Next verse. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. The same day Lot went out of Sodom. See the way Jesus explained it. Jesus does not mention homosexuality. He said the same day Lot left that city, it rained fire and brimstone and destroy the city so the question is why were they destroyed jesus again will explain luke 17 29 but the same day that lot went out of sodom it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all next verse even thus shall it be in the day when the son of man shall be revealed next verse in that day he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house let him not come down to take it away and he that is in the field let him likewise not return back 32 remember lord's wife this is jesus teaching now look at what they did verse 26 and 27 and as it was in the days of noah so shall it be also in the days of the son of man they did eat they drank they married wives they were given in marriage until the day that noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all so in jesus's explanation there was nothing peculiar about sodom and gomorrah as different from what happened in the days of noah that is what happened to sodom and gomorrah is the same thing that happened to the days of noah and it's the same thing that will happen in the days of the son of man there was nothing peculiar about sodom and gomorrah the same problem that sodom and gomorrah had is the same problem that the days of noah had and it will be the same problem that our days will have which means the sin will be consistent 
the sin that befell the days of Noah befell the days of Sodom and Gomorrah and will befall this generation which will be what unbelief which will be unbelief what is unbelief the absence and rejection of what was given what was given the gospel when you refuse the gospel and reject the gospel then you have admitted destruction because when you reject the gospel god withdraws his presence when god withdraws his presence the resultant effect of the absence of god's presence is destruction sin is judged after faith is rejected jesus never singled out anybody's sin jesus never singled out anybody's sin what jesus singled out was unbelief what jesus singled out was unbelief so if Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, it's the same thing that they did that happened in the days of Noah. Unbelief, not homosexuality. But homosexuality is a sin. It is called sexual immorality. Homosexuality is a sin just like fornication and adultery and lasciviousness. They are all sins. In the same class jesus doesn't single out individual sins in john chapter 8 a woman was brought to him who was caught in adultery caught in the very act he did not condemn her neither did he approve of her he did not condemn her neither did he approve of her he simply gave her the gift of acceptance and told her, go and sin no more. He didn't reject her. He didn't approve of her. He received her and showed her what to do. He never singles out individual sins. He saw a pilot. He allowed her to come near him. He allowed her to hold him. He allowed her to kiss him. He allowed her to perfume his body. He didn't stop her. He accepted her the way she was. This is God himself, not your G.O. I'm talking about God Almighty. Daddy God, not Daddy G.O. He allowed the woman to kiss his legs. He allowed the woman to sob on his feet. He allowed her access. He didn't say, yeah, 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 that it didn't stop me, no. He welcomed her to himself because sin cannot defile God. Rather, God will destroy sin. He gave her the gift of acceptance. Hallelujah. He never singled out her sin. He said to her, your sins are forgiven. Glory to God. These are two sins of sexual immorality. Two sins of sexual immorality. The woman caught in the act and the prostitute. Another woman had five husbands. Glory to God. <laughs> How many husbands? The other day people were tearing their trousers over man marrying two wives. This one is five. Deal with that. Jesus met her and didn't talk about the five husbands. He talked about the salvation of her soul. They say you have five husbands. The one you are even with is not your husband. Say, ah, this must be the Messiah. That was it. From there she became an evangelist. He didn't tell her, go and divorce your five men first before you can preach. She went to preach with her five husbands. 
he never singles out individual sins because sin is sin in fact honey you know what jesus said to her if you knew who i am you would have asked in a condition with five husbands she will ask and he will answer you're not hearing me that is in her state with her five men in her immoral life she can pray and god will answer he said if you knew what you would have asked and i will have given you living water you're not seeing what i'm showing you you will have asked and i will have given you living water and you will never thirst again he said, are you greater than our fathers? He said, you have five husbands. One, one. She said, ah, this man must be the Messiah. Come and see one man. He must be the Messiah. Faith in Christ. Faith in Christ. Jesus didn't say, mention their names one by one quickly. And tell us which ones you're going to send away quickly before we... Nah. He does not single out individual sins homosexuality is a sin don't be scared of it somebody says i'm a homosexual say, Ay, blood of jesus stand there no no it's a sin like every other sin second peter 2 a for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds talking about lot seeing and hearing that word hearing is the greek word ako a-k-o-e ako is used for preaching so lot was preaching in sodom lot was preaching in sodom that's why it is when lot left you remember when lot left that it rained fire when the preacher preach and preach and preach and they don't accept it the day the preacher leaves is the day the presence of god is withdrawn so once the presence of god is withdrawn because the message is rejected the resultant effect of the absence of god's presence is the destruction it was when he left if lot had stayed nothing would have happened like for noah it was 120 days rain did not fall till noah entered the ark and locked the door bam rain fell because preachers are the carriers of god's power and presence that's why paul would say i'm not ashamed of the gospel it is the power so the preachers of the gospel are the carriers of god's power and presence when they are resisted and they leave once they leave is judgment that's why jesus said any house you enter where they don't receive you shake off the dust of your feet it will be better for sodom and gomorrah than for that person why because preachers are carriers of god's presence glory and power look at first corinthians 6 9 know ye not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god be not deceived neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor effeminate if your bible was mine i will underline effeminate nor abusers that's another one to underline abusers of themselves with mankind that word effeminate is homosexual effeminate is homosexual see it a lot more clearer in romans 1 18 for the wrath of god is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness next verse because that which may be known of god is manifest in them for god has showed it unto them for the invisible things of him 
from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and godhead so that they are without excuse next verse because that when they knew god they glorified him not as god neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations underline that it will help you and their foolish heart was darkened next verse professing themselves to be wise they became fools next verse and changed the glory of the uncorruptible god into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things wherefore god also gave them up to uncleanness through the loss of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves underline that to dishonor their own bodies between themselves next verse who changed the truth of god into a lie they changed the truth of god a man goes to hospital removes his organ as a man and wears a woman's organ who changed the truth of god into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever amen did you see that a man looking for another man to sleep with in a world of so many women that humorously within the week i even had as a nation where their president said every man should marry two wives because the women are too much so in a world of so many women a man chasing man bro some of them say that's how i was born that's a lie you're changing the truth of god into a lie nobody was born like that you're just suffering from identity crisis you don't know yourself you're lost and you can never know yourself till you know christ first timothy 1 10 for warmongers for them that defile themselves with mankind for men stealers for liars for perjured persons and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine that defile themselves with mankind that defile themselves with mankind is the greek word i can spell it for you to write down a r s e n o k o i t e s a r s e n o k o i t e s it means man with man to defile with mankind mean man going after man is a scene romans 1 27 again you will see it there and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman bond in their loss one toward another men with men walking that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that the compense of their error which was meat men with men walking that which is unseemly however it is a sin that is washed homosexuality is a sin that is washed in first corinthians 6 11 and such were some of you but you are washed you are sanctified you are justified in the name of the lord jesus and by the spirit of our god you are washed amen you are washed Romans 5 1 therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ so the homosexual man 
the lying man and those who are not in such habits all of them require faith in christ to be saved the homosexual the liar and those that don't have those habitual bondages both day and day require faith in christ to be saved so man with man is a sin not a sin in a special book of the bible not a sin in a special book of the bible to say i'm a homosexual is like saying i'm a prostitute it's like saying i'm a fornicator it's like saying i'm a liar it's the same thing can a christian have a homosexual habit yes in capital letters so how can somebody imagine that god destroys homosexuals god does not destroy anybody people choose destruction when they reject god's salvation you didn't hear what i said people choose destruction when they reject god's salvation god saves the homosexuals just like he saves the fearful just like he saves the backbiters just like he saves people with strife and anger and all sins it's like somebody says i have anger issues i am working on it it's the same thing he has homosexual issue he is also working on it it's the same thing i have anger issues i know i am saved i know i am born again i am working on it yes the homosexual has homosexual issues he's born again he is saved he is working on it so what do you do to the homosexual put him on the mirror let him see christ as he begins to look into that perfect law of liberty we all with open face beholding the glory of god as in a mirror we are changed into that same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the lord when people look at the mirror the change takes place people are not changed by condemnation people are changed by righteousness awake to righteousness and sin not people are not changed by pointing them to their sin people are changed by pointing them to the truth all i do is show you the truth when i give you the truth i leave you with the truth the truth will do what it is best in doing and what does the truth do it sets free we preach the truth we preach the message of christ we leave people with jesus he knows what to do with them you may reject the prostitute but jesus accepts her to kiss his legs you can't deal with it but jesus has dealt with it you can't handle it hey brother get out of the way you are not the savior of the world jesus will take care of the matter let jesus do what only he can do in people's life stop being the registrar of heaven and stop being the secretary of heaven give way my friend you cannot say they fly let jesus do what he alone can do leave the man with jesus two of them will sort themselves out am i talking to somebody here Mendo Labayata, stop looking for people's shortcomings. You two, you have your own. Concentrate on your own and solve your own. Jesus knows what to do with them. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Stand on your feet. Let me close this service. The gospel is the power of god unto salvation did i solve the issue of homosexuality even the issue of transgender is identity crisis how can a man just wake up and say i'm a woman mm -mm, i'm a woman i'm no i'm not a man and he goes to hospital and pays expensively for him to be operated on it's identity crisis the question is if such people are saved and they go and change their organ will they be in heaven yes they will be in heaven but they will have earthly shortages they will have what earthly shortages glory to god they are suffering from identity 
the greatest problem of mankind is identity crisis that is why the solution to man's problem is the revelation of jesus when you see jesus in jesus you see yourself once you see yourself crisis ends oh like never before that's our mandate to reintroduce jesus to this generation equipping the believer to know who you are in christ what you have in christ and what christ can do through you that's what we're about as a church and i declare unto you you will proclaim this gospel you will preach this good news you will preach it on the mountain top you will preach it on the house top you will preach it in the villages you will preach it in the cities you will preach it in your office you will make jesus known to your generation in the name of jesus passion for souls hunger for souls desire for evangelism desire to see sinners saved desire to see the labor of jesus not wasted i command it to consume you in the name of jesus and i declare the grace of god to be abundantly multiplied in your life great grace upon you today throughout this week enjoy the abundance of grace enjoy the gift of righteousness walk in the liberty of sonship walk free from the condemnation of sin in the name of jesus father i give you praise father i give you praise father i give you praise in jesus precious name and every believer says that amen like you know what you're talking about yeah. say i believe 